Je suis très, très, très heureuse et plus qu'heureuse, très honorée euh, d'être ici parmi vous et au milieu de personnes si extraordinaires. Nous venons d'écouter euh, deux femmes brillantes, euh, notre cher Najavalo Belkacem et ma très chère amie Michel Aliomari. Il y en a d'autres qui sont aussi, et, euh, aussi extraordinaires. Des, 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 des femmes comme Rosalia Arteaga Serrano, présidente euh, de l'Équateur, euh, comme Ana Elena Chacon, vice-présidente du Costa Rica, euh, comme Vaira Vique Freiberga, je ne sais pas si je dis bien le nom, mais c'est la présidence de l'ancienne présidente de, de la DIA. Euh, il y en a tellement que je ne sais même pas par où, euh, par où commencer ou par où finir. Linda Chavez, mon amie. Euh, et donc cette, cette réunion euh, qui commémore le, la journée de la femme est très très extraordinaire elle est extraordinaire pour beaucoup de raisons euh, d'abord cette compagnie euh, ces femmes extraordinaires euh, euh, de tous les coins du monde et la date qui est évidemment euh, ce 8 mars que nous fêtons mais pour moi personnellement hier euh, c'était l'anniversaire 22 ans et c'est donc très significatif pour moi d'être ici avec vous dans cette conférence organisée par un, un mouvement de résistance, un mouvement de résistance euh, dont l'ADN est celui de confronter euh, la culture patriarcale, oppressive, misogyne euh, du, du régime iranien. Et je me sens particulièrement honorée de faire partie de ce club de femmes qui euh, faisons face à ce genre de comportement. Because I would like to, to explain why this date and this conference is so special. Uh, the world witnessed the ongoing series of protests and civil unrest after the assassination of Gina. I like to call her Gina, her real name, uh, Amini, on September 2022. And we, we witness repression. We witness repression in the most barbaric way. Thousands of people, especially women and also minors, were killed because they were protesting. And the, world, the, the, the entire world witnessed that women were at the forefront of these protests. Well, Miriam Rajavi said it, and I think it's important to, to think of what this means. She said that this was not spontaneous occurrence. And we have to, to think about what this means, because these women in Iran are faced to a gender apartheid. And they have been turned into victims of a brutal regime which suppresses their rights, um, Najavalo Belkacem uh, explained you know, de uh, des described this awful situation uh, very brilliantly. And the whole system has been built in making the hijab something that should be something that you wear if you want, or you wear if you, you don't wear if you don't want. It has become the instrument of repression so far to the extent that one of the leaders of uh, uh, the Iranian regime said openly that improperly veiled women should be made to feel unsafe in public. This is the objective, to make women scare to neutralize the power of women. 
But, and this is what is impressive, instead of demoralizing women, we have witnessed how these women have grown to be resolute, more resolute, every time more resilient and more defying. And they have become not protesters, which is altogether amazing, but they have become resistance fighters. And it is important that we link what's happening. Because when we see Iranian women leading at the forefront this resistance movement, we have to question ourselves on how this happened. And it happened because, of course, they have been victims of this brutal regime, but also, and this is so important for me, because they have had a role model. And I want to stress how much the role of Miriam Rajavi has been vital in bringing women to empower themselves and to go beyond fear. You know, I have been um, accompanying uh, Miriam for, for many years now. And I have observed her in, in so many stages. Um, I remember the first time I, I came to this rally. Uh, I, in fact, it was here. It was exactly in the same place many, many years ago. And, and I remember Elie Wiesel was without that, with us that day. Um, and after my participation in, in this, uh, in this uh, conference, my, my computer nearly, I mean, busted in all type of messages uh, informing me that uh, I was uh, in a, uh, fallen into an organization that was, in fact, a um, person personality cult, uh, that they were terrorists, that they were communists. So I thought, OK, I, I, I have to do my homework and I have to see what's going on. And if I'm here after 15 years, it's because I have my, my profound uh, certitude that I am in the place history wants us to be. We are in the right place. And I have been witnessing the amazing achievements of Miriam Rajavi as a woman leader in the Iranian resistance. And I say this because, of course, I wanted to see what was happening in this personality cult. And one of the images I have seared in my memory was when finally, after years of struggle, we managed to have all the people that were in Camp Liberty, you remember in Iraq, suffering, um, I mean, all the difficulties because they were being massacred by the proxies of Iran in Iraq. And finally, they arrived to Albania. Heaven, paradise, well, no. When they arrived, uh, they had some land that they could afford and nothing else. It was a field, bare field with nothing on it. And I arrived, I think, like four or five months after. And I remember seeing Miriam Rajavi wearing boots, you know, workers' boots, gloves, and working in building, but physically building the, the, the buildings that would be turning into the places where they would sleep, the places where they would work. I remember that. 
I remember that. And then when, when they tell us that, uh, I mean, that this is a personality called um, um, fake news and, and demonization, and it makes me sick because I know what it is. I've been subject to fake news. I also have been subject to many criticisms that I feel unjust. But in this case, because I know who Miriam Rajavi is, uh, it, makes, it makes me even more sick um, because of the lies that they portray. I have been seeing her as a woman that is not above the others. She's not above. She's serving, always serving, all the time serving her peers. And not only that, you all who have been entering to this venue, you have seen the work of the ladies of the MEK, of the PMOI. Well, these women have been empowered by Miriam Rajavi to take leadership, to take action, to take decisions. And they take decisions on behalf of the well-being of a big community. And I think that what is amazing is that this is a cultural revolution, not a gender war. And it's not a gender war. And this is very important for us to understand the value on, of not being a gender war. Because I was talking uh, before entering um, with my Spanish friends on how we feel that um, for my generation, uh, the, 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 status, the women's status today, we, we feel that we have been like uh, losing our rights, losing the space. The, the space for women has been shrinking. The only place where I feel that it has not been shrinking is here, in the PMI, where I feel that women have not only been empowered, but, and this is very important, it's the feeling that men and women all together have embraced the, the, the sense of opportunity they have in living this type of leadership because they are opposing, confronting, and destroying a patriarchal behavior. And this is something that has been embraced by men and by women all alike. I mean, I come from a South American country. I'm half French, half Colombian. In South America, machism is there. Misogynism is there. I know what I'm talking about. I was in victim and, you know, a hostage in a very patriarchal, misogynistic structure. I, I know how it works. And it's sometimes things that you don't even see because it's subtle. And it's, it's things that makes you uncomfortable, but you don't realize in the moment why you are feeling so bad and so threatened. And it takes some days for you to put the words on it. Well, here, women are safe. Women are equal because they are partners with men. It's not a gender war. And I think for me that's very, very important. I think it's remarkable in, in, in so many ways. And this is remarkable because I want to just throw here something just before finishing, is that, okay, these women in Iran are in the forefront of this battle to overthrow this horrible dictatorship. And here in the West, our countries, they are trying to explain to us that this is not relevant. It's not relevant until we see what the regime is doing to oppose and demonize this resistance, which is amazing. They have a whole diplomacy built 
on confronting the MEK and demonizing Miriam Rajavi. Not only people working in the embassies, but terrorists working in the embassies. And terrorists plotting terrorist attacks to annihilate this movement. You remember Villepinte 2018 and assassination plots all over the place? If this mo movement wasn't important, why bother? But not only that, we have um, recently um, in been informed of leaks uh, of messages um, of the interior minister and the minister of uh, foreign affairs and the minister of intelligence in, in, in Iran. And um, it, there's a whole strategy to pay academics, scientists, people that normally would feel like they're neutral and they're objective and what they will say is like uh, no biased. They are paid by the regime to demonize the PMOI. You imagine the time consuming, the effort, I mean, the, 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 the whole energy that they have been throwing to annihilate this resistance. Well, that's one of the reasons I'm so happy today. Because we're here, after many years, we are gaining momentum. I know that we are going to be the generation that applauds the overthrow of the Moles regime. And women are the change makers. Women are the ones who are going to overthrow the regime. And it makes me feel so fine. Because I know deep inside of me that the worst nightmare of these mullahs is to have women taking them down. And this is what is going to happen. So, with Miriam Rajavi and with millions of Iranian women, let's say, women, we can and we must. Thank you.